Happy Homebrew Wednesday on a Wednesday. I better get this thing out in time. So, had a very awesome surprise. Kind of a surprise. I kind of knew it was coming, but I had an uh, awesome package show up on my door today from none other than this dude here. Look at that. Look at that bottle cap label. I have to, I have to find out where you're doing your work, Mr. Rec Brewery, because um, prepare... It says, it says, prepare to be wrecked. Uh, this is from uh, uh, Matthew. Uh, he's down in South Carolina. His brewery is called Rec Brewery. I will make sure I put his, uh, his uh, uh, URL in the, in the comment section. So please go check his, uh, check his page out. Uh, he just relocated down to South Carolina. He's got a lot of cool brews going. One that uh, I, I commented on one of his videos, the Mango Cream uh, Ale. He's, uh, he sent me today. I got four beers. I got a coffee brown, the mango cream, uh, this bee limey, uh, which I'm gonna gonna drink here on the Humber Wednesday. Uh, and then he got sent me his version of Dropkick Nate. His Dropkick Nate, I think, was the only one that was post water chemistry um, before he checked out his water chemistry and did certain mineral contents. So uh, I think it's you know this one, the bee limey, the coffee brown, or the coffee yeah the coffee brown and the. Um, um, uh, the uh, mango cream uh, are all pre-treated, uh, and then once he finally got his water tested, I think he, you know, kind of adjusted the minerals based on the on the report. So anyway, I'll keep that in mind. This one was interesting, so I like interesting. So we're gonna we're gonna check this out. So let's get into this. <clears throat> nice big hiss. Now this is a lime pilsner. Uh, don't need no anything about the beer other than uh, like you said it was uh, pre uh, pre water chemistry treatment so um, just looking at it uh, not much of a head on this one I know it's carbonated because I heard the I heard the hiss come out of it uh, and it uh, had, it looks kind of like a looks kind of like a wheat looks kind of like a wheat ale it's got that kind of haze to it uh, there's no floaters or anything in it um, it's got lime in here I don't know if he used lime pulp or he uh, put it in the, like a like a dry lime or dry hop lime or uh, if he's going to use lime juice in it. Don't really know anything about that, but let's go in for a smell. Mm, I certainly get the lime. Um, it smells like a, you know those little plastic green limes that you get that you you know take and you squeeze and get the lime juice. That's what I get off this. Also kind of reminds me of like a lime Gatorade smell. Anyway, uh, yep, got the lime, brother. All right, cheers. Cheers, Matt. That is very interesting. I remember this from uh, so uh, so Matt has been in a couple of SJ pours. I think we used to be in the same um, <clears throat> we used to be in the same uh, same hub, and so I've tasted his beers once or twice. I don't know if it was twice. I think maybe once, um, and I can recognize that character. What I remember from Matt's beers, they are uh, very cleanly fermented. Uh, there's like no off flavors or you know ferment ferment fermenting off flavors or smells or anything like that this one is it's a bit light on the carbonation and uh, I know I had a big hiss on it um, I'm not sure if it's the whatever the lime ingredient was that caused the that caused the head to go down But this is a, I do get kind of the clean uh, Pilsner. You know, a Pilsner, it's weird. A Pilsner, it, it ferments very cleanly, uh, but it, but it um, has kind of a fruity character to it, I've always thought. I can tell that in here, but it's doing this dance with the lime, and now I can see why he says it's very interesting. It's, uh, it's going down extremely fast, by the way. He didn't say what the ABV was in here. I'm assuming he, 
hoping he didn't put something on here that I, I need to know about. And, you know, maybe it's like an 11.2 or something. I think it's probably around 5%, 5% or less. It's very sessionable. Uh, but the, the lime does uh, have a, a kind of a, kind of a competing um, carrot quality with the, with the, um, whatever the, the hops he used, I think. Yeah, you can, it's kind of, you know, it reminds me of, it's It's a uh, critique that I got back on my uh, tart vanilla brown that I called the deliverance that I submitted to uh, the midwinter uh, Minnesota uh, competition, uh, or midwinter Minnesota, yeah, yeah, no, mid midwinter uh, Minnesota, uh, Milwaukee, wrong state, <clears throat> um, they said that the uh, the the sourness with the with the brown was kind of a competing flavor. I can kind of get that with this. This is very very drinkable. Uh, the smell is freaking killer. It's uh, I would really like to try maybe a toned down version of this lime character with uh, with an IPA. I think that would be really wicked good. Um, Yeah, and this is the one that I think uh, he had some, and it could also be on the on the head piece. It could be because it's kind of pre before he, you know, had tested his water and realized that there was some things out of whack, and he had to go do some some chemical adjustments. So uh, um, I think he ha I think he had it figured out for the for the DKN. But dude, this is a good beer. It's uh it's super sessionable, man. This is like a summer beer here. I think you gotta kind of work out something with the hops and the lime a little bit. Um, maybe, 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 uh, maybe do just a slight bittering and no finishing hops. If it's the hops that's doing the the competing with the with the lime. Um, and and I and I would like to know uh, what you did uh, to get the lime character, uh, Matt. If you could throw that in the comments. But uh, anyway, I got three three more beers and look at this dude's. Um, Look at his artwork, man. He's got awesome labels. He's got really awesome um, bottle caps. And uh, I need to know where you got your bottle caps done because they are freaking cool. Uh, I'm out of my bottle caps, so I need to order some new ones. And uh, I like your version uh, better than the whatever the company was that I used. So, so let me know. Okay, so uh, again, thanks for the thanks for the beers, Matt. I'm gonna knock through these and uh, I'm gonna do a little side by side. Uh, with your because I have I have one or two DKNs left that I brewed and it'd be interesting to see our different takes on the DKN so I'll do that as well uh, and I'm gonna have some beers coming back your way um, this is the first beer meal I've gotten in a long time uh, um, I say a long time I guess it hasn't been too long but it's you know been a while um, all right so brewing wise uh, I just want to say it's been a while since I brewed old school uh, double IPA. I think uh, Tony Yates might be uh, brewing that if he if he gets to it. Uh, send him up the recipe, and if anybody else wants a recipe, just let me know. I'm not keeping it secret or anything. Um, I did change the recipe. Um, I think I changed it. Um, I, I lowered the caramel. I used to do three pounds of caramel ten. I changed that to one pound of caramel thirty. And the version that I just brewed, I, I did the dry hops. Let's see, I went from uh, 1074 down to 1011. So it's going to be an 8.3%, I believe, if that's right. 8.3, 8.2, something like that. Uh, which is a little bit lower than what uh, old schools were really 8.7. So it's going to be a little bit lower uh, alcohol content. And uh, the color is quite a bit lighter. And I cracked it open. Uh, once it fermented out and I threw the dry hops in, the, the, it, and then, you know, old school is just citrus Simcoe and I use a little bit of Magnum up front for the bittering. Um, I used to do citrus Simcoe a quarter ounce like every five or ten minutes all the way through the boil until the very end and I would throw in some Columbus at the end. I changed that up. That was like one of the first versions of old school. Uh, but I changed it up and now I do Matt. I really like using Magnum because Magnum it's so, such a clean bittering hop. Um, and I use about, I don't know what, an ounce of, of Magnum or something like that up front, and uh, and then uh, and then I use a Simcoe and Citra, and uh, I went to go dry hop it the other day. I did my gravity sample, 
and I the smell the aroma coming out of that bucket is incredible and the uh, uh, sample tasted amazing I mean best version of old school I have ever done I might have to rename it uh, it's it's you know quite a bit different and good in a good way um, much more I've always had this kind of super malty and maybe it's because I changed up the malt bill a little bit um, the hops are really shining through and uh, I'm expecting great things out of it so it's gonna be a lot lighter um, I'll see if I clarify it or you know I think I'll use I think I will uh, but it's gonna be a super beer I'm really really excited I'm glad I decided to brew it um, I still got the double it's drinking really nicely um, yeah, so, oh, and the English Bitter's drinking, that, that's a great baseball beer. That's become my baseball beer is English Bitter because it's kind of a nice, you know, it's 5% even, uh, this version of Punch and Judy, and it drinks really well watching sports. So had a great night last night watching the Capitals and the Nats, you know, uh, defeat their team. So anyway, that's it for, oh, uh, I don't know if you could tell, but I'm trying to gradually... Uh, except my pattern baldness you know i've been fighting it kind of the last it seems like i once i retired from the military um you know you spend all your life with short hair and then you decide oh man i can grow a beard i can grow long hair no um my beard kind of looks like a rat beard and so my wife makes me shave it off if i want to maintain a, a, a good status with her uh and my hair unfortunately has decided to start you know you know i've seen pictures of my grandfather so i know where i'm headed my grandfather on my on my mom's side. So I know where I'm headed, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I told the barber, I said, hey, I'm not, I don't, I'm not one of those guys that wants a freaking comb over. So, you know, can you, you know, help me gradually transition into accepting this, you know, beautiful baldness. And so he said, trim even, trim even. So he trimmed it even and we're going to keep, you know, going here and see how long it takes me to, you know, get a little uh, shiny up here. Anyway, uh, sorry, weird topic, but what the hell. It's my homebrew Wednesday, right? Hey, uh, Matt, thanks again. Remember, go check out Rec Brewery. Uh, not a whole lot of brewing stuff going on. Uh, I finished my brew, just letting it ferment. And uh, we got a party coming up this weekend for my daughter's soccer team. So a lot of the beer taps behind this camera will be uh, getting a workout. So uh, I'll have an opportunity to brew and, and replace some more. So anyway, hey, have yourself a happy homebrew uh, like I do. And have a very, very happy homebrew Wednesday. Cheers. Mmm, blimey.